1. This was a few years ago. I'm from the UK, so this story was when I worked at the theatre where musical and plays are put on, not a cinema where films are shown. One evening performance, I was working what we call Head Door, where I am in charge of access patrons and restocking bars and kiosks during the show. So I only witnessed what happened to my friend as I did my job. It was the first time our theatre had gotten Shrek the Musical, which didn't have an age restriction. All it advertised was Family Show. Well, one entitled family changed that. It was a regular shift, not too busy. I only had two access patrons in, so incoming was easy. So was interval. No issues. As I did my toilet check runs for the second act, I noticed a patron talking to one of my friends. No biggie, quite usual. I checked one side of the circle toilets, then headed over to the other side. Whilst I did, my friend made her way down to a different patron. I guessed the complaint, so I stayed in the wings just in case she needed backup. Theatre patrons can be difficult. That's when I noticed the patron she was talking to had a baby. Yep, a baby, only a few months old. The patron, our entitled mother, huffed and left the auditorium. I checked with my friend to see if everything was okay. Yeah, another patron had complained about baby's noise, so as per our rules, she had to follow it up and suggest EM just head out of the auditorium for a few until baby had calmed down. Thought nothing of it. However, it kicked off at outgoing. I had sorted my access patron in the stalls and came up the back way into the circle to find my friend getting yelled at by entitled mother and entitled father. Since we had such abuse during Mamma Mia's run, we had been told to call security when a patron started to become aggressive. I called it on the radio and ran over. Security and manager were on their way. Entitled father literally chased my friend out of the auditorium and onto the prom. Kinda like a lobby area where kiosks are. He backed her into a corner, all the while EM shadowing him, and it looked like he was going to hit my friend. I placed myself between her and him and asked calmly if everything was okay. No. Apparently my friend had demanded his wife and baby leave the auditorium and weren't allowed to watch the show that we were discriminating against him and his wife. He'd paid good money to see this so his baby could watch Shrek. It was like six months, could barely lift his head, but okay. Manager and security arrived, and I took my friend away from entitled father and mother who were demanding refunds, my friend to be sacked, and all sorts. How dare my friend speak to his wife like that? She was incredibly rude, and his whole night had been ruined because of her. Turns out, my friend had gotten a noise complaint from several patrons about the baby crying and fussing and, well, being a baby. She spoke to Entitled Mother and asked if everything was alright, that if she needed to leave for a few minutes, that was fine. She didn't demand, merely suggested. She did, but when she didn't return, my friend went to check on her. Yam was stood huffing and puffing, so my friend said if baby has calmed down, they can go back in and that it's absolutely fine to come in and out as the baby needs. EM had a go at her saying how rude my friend was being, and that she had every right to stay in her seat she had paid for, again saying she was being discriminated against. It's good to note that when we get a noise complaint from a patron, it's our job to go and check it out. Chit chatter is not on. Neither is using your phone. It's theatre etiquette to be respectful to those around you. So if you're being noisy, we're going to ask you nicely to be quiet. The next evening, on my next shift, I was told box office had placed our usual age restrictions on there, no under fives, after discussing what had happened with the company. Patrons had been emailed with the revised rules too, strongly pushing home the idea of no babies please. The parents were kicked out after hurling abuse at my manager who tried to explain and were blacklisted at box office. We get our age restrictions and all recommendations from the company themselves. They didn't give us one until that incident. To them, family show was all they needed, and they thought they wouldn't get very young children, let alone babies, therefore we didn't need a restriction. Prove them wrong, babies, unless it's a kiddie show like Peppa Pig or Teletubbies, don't do well at live theatre. Keep your child at home, Everyone in that auditorium has paid good money to see that show. 
they don't want a screaming baby ruining it. Theatre tickets cost anywhere from £10 to easily £300. Don't think people want to hear your baby crying when they've paid that amount. The actors don't appreciate it either. 2. The other day I was at my local reptile and exotic pet store to pick up some things for my small zoo back home. When I entered the store, a young man was walking around clutching a snake to his chest. He seemed extremely upset and kept walking to the counter, before quickly walking away, not saying anything. He appeared to be with two women, the girlfriend and her mother, I later found out, who seemed to pick at him every time he walked away from the counter. I personally thought the snake was ill, as the young man seemed to almost be in tears. I looked to one of the employees, but they waved me off and pointed me over another employee, Alex, who was unloading their newest shipment of critters. Alex was super excited to show me the new side neck turtles they had just gotten in. He and I got into a pretty heated debate about the amount of care needed for turtles in general. I stated pretty loudly that while they were fun to look at and play with, I didn't want another aquatic animal in my house, as they took a lot of speciality care that I was horrible with. I suck with pH levels in testing, and I admit it. It was then that the mother of the girlfriend came over and interrupted our conversation. I will name her Donna. Hello, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but can I ask you a personal question, hun? Donna smiled at me. Uh, sure. I shrugged, looking at Alex confused. So, if I'm hearing you correctly, you don't like turtles, right? So what would you do if your boyfriend decided to go out and buy a turtle and just take it home? Donna waved her daughter and the boyfriend over. Now, I am a blunt person, and I wasn't sure where the conversation was going, but I had an idea. Looking between Donna and the upset boyfriend, I answered her question with a few of my own. Would I have to take care of it? That doesn't matter. Actually, it does. It's not like a dog that's a joint commitment. If I don't want to take care of a reptile, and it belongs to my partner, I'm not forced to. Am I afraid of turtles? No, they're just disgusting. The daughter slash girlfriend snarks. She is now Karen. This is the wrong place for you to be shouting that kind of BS. I gesture around the reptile owners, all of whom look a little insulted. I look at the boyfriend, who's not really paying attention. He's just staring at the snake and rubbing his chin. Finally able to get a good look at the snake, I'm a little shocked. This isn't like a baby or even a juvenile animal that's normally sold in stores or shows. This is a fully grown and very well taken care of California king snake. Staring at the boyfriend a little more intently, I noticed an eerily similar snake tattoo on his arm with the name Tusker written under it. This is not new ink, this is old. Sweetheart, I coo gently to the boyfriend, how old is Tusker? The boyfriend finally makes eye contact. He's ten. My dad bought him for my thirteenth birthday. Seething, I ask why he brought his baby here. He proceeds to tell me that his girlfriend of a year wants to move in with him, but told him he needed to get rid of his snake. He didn't want to, but Donna insisted he was being selfish not getting rid of his baby for Karen's comfort. Why does any of this matter? It's just a stupid snake, and you're supposed to love me. She actually stomps her foot. It matters, and your mom obviously thinks it matters, since she lied about the circumstances to try and get the answer she wants. Honestly, you say if he loves you, he'll do this? Why isn't it if you love him, you'll get over yourself and try to find a balance? If you had a dog or a cat for that length of time, would you be trying to get rid of it? I snarl at her. Her mother steps in. But it's not. It's a snake. You're right, which means instead of it being a few more years of joy and companionship for them, you will have Tusker for another 13 to 20 years. Given this conversation, I'm not confident that you'll still be in his life for that long. Donna looked like I slapped her child. You asked for my opinion, I'm telling it to you. I'd dump you long before I got rid of my babies. You came into a reptile store and expected a different answer, which is beyond stupid. Even if the ladies or gents here agreed with you, 
They obviously lost the war since their partners are here shopping for those pets. The boyfriend seemed to get taller as he finally stood up straight. She's right. I'm not leaving Tusker here. I'm taking him home and you can either come with me or stay here. I'm not going anywhere with that monster. The boyfriend turned around and walked out. He got into his car and left the two women there. Apparently, he had driven them there, which took a second for them to realize. Funnier still when Alex felt the need to point out, I'm not her boyfriend. I'm gay. Good job, Alex. Thanks for the help. 3. This isn't about a specific entitled individual, but an entitled mindset that I used to encounter when I worked the front desk at our local city and county-funded library. When we started actually enforcing our borrowing policies and the fines that went with them. The big drama source, children's materials, be it Dora the Explorer or George and Martha. Chad or Karen, generally it would be Karen because Chad couldn't be bothered, would come in and literally strip entire shelves of children's books and media. No problem, if you can carry it, you can borrow it. Just don't bring in a forklift. Problem, though the checkout and return policies were clearly posted, they'd show up three months or more later with the stuff all broken and sticky if at all, and throw a fit when they found they owed a gigantic fine, and their card was B-L-O-C-K-E-D blocked. It's just kid stuff, they'd whine. You shouldn't have to pay for kid stuff. Or my favorite, how dare you keep my precious children away from books by charging them late fees. And my double-double favorite. But it was snapped in two when we checked it out. Why should we have to pay for it? All media goes through a check-in process which includes damage inspection. That'll be $15 to replace the broken tiddly widdly uses the potty or whatever. Plus another $15 for the other late materials. <sighs> but, 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 etc. It gets better. Oh, all right, if you insist. You didn't used to do this. It's not fair. Blah, blah, blah. And then, ah, gotcha! Chad, but generally Karen, would triumphantly whip out their kids' cars to check out without paying the fine. Or returning the missing stuff. Only to learn that all cars for minors are linked to their parent or legal guardian until age 18, and therefore blocked too. They'd claim they didn't know that. It wasn't fair. I want to see the director. Hmm... She's the one telling you that you owe big bucks for damaged materials. Oh. But if Chad, usually Karen, insisted we'd go show them the original application, which had their signature on it agreeing to this arrangement. Not our fault you didn't read the fine print before you signed. Snarling, they demand an application for the baby or the dog or possibly someone's American Girl doll. Whatever only to be politely turned down because the rule was until a child is of school age, they can't have their own library card. So Karen or Chad would demand an application for themselves for a new card, like getting a second visa or whatever because you'd max out the first, I guess, only to be told, if your card is blocked, you can get a new one, but it'll be blocked too. Oh, and as you already have one, this counts as a replacement, so that'll be one dollar, please. Plus, we do a system check to be sure you don't have a duplicate card in the system that's blocked after we check your ID and a recent bill with your name and address on it. Why? Because before the return policy was finally enforced, we'd get people who take out hundreds of dollars of materials and never return them, get their card blocked, come back in when they saw a clerk they didn't recognize and apply for a new card, and repeat the cycle until they were hogging thousands of dollars worth of materials that other people couldn't get access to. This may sound petty, but books and media are expensive and paid for by the taxpayers, and it's a library's responsibility to take care of their community's resources for everyone. Anyway, scream, scream, rant, rave, wail. It's not fair, but we need to keep all these books and DVDs. Why should Starwing will cry if they return their wave with books, etc. Chad, but usually Karen, would either pay the fees or store them out, 
duckling row of toddlers scrambling to keep up behind them. Claiming they'd never come back, we owed them an apology. We were horrible. We were keeping their precious children from reading. Blah, 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 blah. Sorry, folks. The days of constantly having to spend money replacing and replacing materials that people don't return, when we could have spent that same money on buying new computers for the kids, as well as new books and other materials that we didn't have in the collection before, are O-V-E-R. Simply put, return this shit on time and you won't owe us a dime. Lose it or return it late, and face the fee like all other patrons. Got it? But Karen, and occasionally Chad, never got this. Nope, not without a tantrum. Two thoughts on parting. Generally, the worst offenders were upscale. The low-income folks, once they learned the policy had changed, quietly returned the books, paid the fines, etc., and from then on were very punctual about getting the materials back on time and in good shape. However, if they were financially better off, they'd refuse to return the materials and were shocked when we turned the situation over to the county prosecutor, who would send them a lovely but politely threatening letter stating that they had taken over $300 plus in county property. They were now facing theft charges. They could avoid these charges by returning the materials, and once they paid their fine, sometimes over $1,000, they were quite welcome to come back and check out new stuff and return it so other people can have a turn. 4. This happened about a year and a half ago before the whole COVID thing. I'd moved into a new home a few months ago, and one of the reasons I especially liked this home was because of its nice lot and close parks. Anyways, one day, a few months after I moved in, I noticed that there was a piece of dog poop on my front lawn. I looked around and I didn't see anyone walking their dog. Quite a few of my neighbors had dogs, and I figured one of them had forgotten to pick up after their dog. I got a plastic bag and threw the poop in the trash, and I thought nothing of it. Imagine my surprise when two days later there was another dog poop in my lawn. This time I saw an entitled kid down the street walking his dog. I wasn't sure it was him and his mother seemed kind of nice, so I thought I'd see if it happened again. A few days later I was about to leave the house when I saw E.K. with his dog, dropping a steaming pile of dog poop onto my lawn. I took out my phone and recorded a video, and after I got back I went to his house. Hello, miss. I'm sorry if I'm interrupting something, but I was just wondering if we could talk about your son and his dog. Of course, what's up? I noticed E.K. walking his dog outside my house, and I saw that his dog, uh, pooped on my lawn, and E.K. never picked it up. He carries bags when he walks his dog, and I'd appreciate it if you could ask him to pick up after his dog from now on. That's nonsense. My son would never do anything like that. Ask anyone. He's the most well-behaved child in this neighborhood. I'm sorry, miss. I'm not saying your son is a bad child or anything. I just want him to pick up after his dog. I even have a video of him walking away after his dog pooped on my lawn. <laughs> Fine. I will talk to him. Now go away. She slammed the door in my face, and I thought that would be the end of things. Boy, was I wrong. I didn't see E.K. walking his dog outside my house for a while or so after that, but around ten days later, I saw another pile of poop on my lawn. I'd had enough now, and I went back to E.M.'s house. Miss, this is really unacceptable. You said you'd talk to your son, and now there's another pile of poop on my lawn. That wasn't my son. He's an absolute angel. He said he'd never do it again, and he didn't. E.K. came to the door. E.K., did your dog poop in this man's lawn again? No, never. That should be enough for you. Now don't come back again. I was having dinner at my new neighbor's house and the topic of EM came up. My neighbor told me that pretty much everyone hated this lady, as she was always borrowing stuff and claiming she never took them, filling other people's trash cans instead of paying for a special pickup. You get the idea. I finally broke when her dog pooped not once, not twice, but three times in my lawn in the same day. I got an epic idea. This time I used a plastic bag to pick up the poop, but instead of throwing it in the trash, I kept it out in my backyard. For the next week, I collected poop from the lawn like a scientist, bagging every one. 
I'm sure if someone saw me, they would have thought I was crazy. After a week, I had around four bags of EK's dog's poop in my backyard. On Friday night, I went over to her mailbox and absolutely caked it in her dog shit. I got the sides, the top, and the bottom. I completely covered the thing. The next day, I was treated to the sight of her husband hosing their mailbox off with a look of utter disgust on his face. After that, her kid mysteriously stopped walking his dog in front of my house. Five. For some context, I bought myself a Mini Cooper SE, the first fully electric vehicle by Mini, a few weeks before this story happens. Where I live, Germany, electric cars need to have a so-called AVAS, Acoustic Vehicle Alerting System turned on, when driving below 30 km per hour. The AVAS makes a sound to warn walkers and bikers on the street because electric vehicles don't normally make noise. The one on the Mini Cooper SC kinda sounds like a spaceship. Now onto the story. About a half a year ago, we celebrated my grandma's 60th birthday, and I took my new Mini to get to the celebration. I didn't know who else was invited, but I didn't care at the time. The ride to my grandma's place was long, and I knew that I needed to recharge at my grandma's place, or else I couldn't make it back home. So I arrive at my grandma's place and I see a few people, including entitled aunt and entitled kid, waiting for me in the driveway, to park in the parking lot that they prepared for me, the one next to an outlet where I could charge my car. I drove rather slowly because I only did this a few times before and I was extra careful, and therefore the office was turned on. I get out, plug my car into the outlet, and we go inside to celebrate. After about two hours, I wanted to check if my car was alright. It was rather new at this time, so this was normal for me, and to get some fresh air. I see EA and EK looking at my car. The following conversation went kind of like this. Mummy, this car sounded like a spaceship. I know, sweetie. I don't know why it does that, though. Can I help you with something? Is this your car? Yes. My child wants to drive it. I'm a little confused. What? I can drive a bit and take it with me if you want. No, he wants to drive it. It doesn't look as complicated as a normal car, so I'm sure he can drive it. Context. The Cooper SE has only two pedals and no gear lever because electric. Also, when talking about my car earlier, I said that it feels like you're driving a go-kart. He sure doesn't. It's way more complicated than it looks. But it sounded like a spaceship, so it can't be more than a little toy. I want to drive a spaceship now. Sorry, but I can't allow that. Why not? You're just selfish. Sure, he can drive for a minute or two in the driveway here. No, he's just a kid. I bet you don't even own that car. I'm sure it's stolen or someone else owns it. No, I got the keys. I pull out the keys and open the car. Big, big mistake. Look, sweetie, now you can get in. She picks up her son and puts him on the driver's seat. I'm very annoyed and angry at this point. Excuse me, what do you think you're doing? You've been very rude to me and my little angel, so he deserves to drive in your car. He couldn't start the car because it was still plugged in. He was messing around with the electronics inside, and he tried to start the engine multiple times. There is a yellow obvious start switch below the GPS system. Would you please take your kid out of my car? No, he deserves it. That's where it had enough. I push the EM aside and open the driver's seat door, take EK out of my car and put him on the floor on his feet. What does this entitled bitch hole do? What does this entitled butthole do? He lets himself fall on purpose and starts crying that I broke his arm while taking him out of my car. The EA is screaming and crying about his close to death son. I really didn't use much force or anything. The other family members hear EK's crying. Meanwhile, I unplug my car, get into it, and drive away. On my way back home, I had to recharge once, and that's where I called the others back and tell them what has happened. They tell me that EA has tried to call the ambulance and has been kicked out of the celebration. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to the Impractical Proudness of Parents. Hi, pop. Number 56. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. If you liked the video, then please do boop the like button, 
leave a comment, and if you'd like to see more videos, then please do subscribe. I upload every day. Okay, Saturday, um, for once I'm actually hoping the dog sounds came through in the recording, because the doggy story, it was good time, and actually, surprisingly, they shut up after for the entitled kids story, and there, there were actually kids being annoying in the background, but I don't think they were very loud. Uh, not loud enough to be picked up anyway. You know, one of the many cool things about my job is it's a great chance to learn things uh, pretty much every day. You know. uh, today I learned about uh, Avis. I think that's the pronunciation. I did look up a video and that's how people were pronouncing it, which I didn't even consider being a thing. I suppose it makes sense. Um, and as long as it's not making too much noise, I think it's a, pretty, it's a good idea. It doesn't seem to be as loud as a car and it actually sounds... <laughs> You know when you ever when you watch movies that take place in the future and you've got cars like Demolition Man, for example, where the cars are presumed to be electric or some such, they have that kind of you know that kind of futury car sounds. It's kind of like that. So I, I quite like the idea that eventually that's just going to be what we hear because gradually, you know, the fuel cars will either they'll go away. I don't think they'll ever be outlawed. But they'll, they'll go away, or people might even have conversions done, because I can see us getting to the point where petrol stations, gas stations, don't offer fossil fuels. Maybe they just offer beef jerky and things. Well, no, it'll be the future, so we won't actually have any cows, unless the cows have evolved and have taken over, so we're not allowed to eat them anymore. So it's likely going to be vegan beef-style jerky, which I've actually tried, and it's not bad. Anyway, with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.